uh, you are building an application or you have an application where you basically have a network database. You have this database with the information of all your devices. That's a lot of work to keep up to date because you have to entry the data in the first place and then you have to keep it up to date. So how can we automate that? Because I don't want to spend my time doing that stuff. I want to do something that is more interesting. And also, in Minos, uh, it happened many times that data was entered manually and it was mistaken. And after a while, it also becomes uh, it's not up to date anymore. So we need to check that it's always correct. And so, what can we do? Um, I think it would be really cool to have um, a, a library that ab abstract differences between manufacturers, devices, and protocols. Is, it, is that possible? Well, let's see. Uh, maybe. Uh, it, it would be really cool to have one API and to retrieve data from all these firmwares and protocols with that same API if the data is available. And uh, it should be easy or at least possible to add new combinations of firmware and protocols. More firmware than protocols because we uh, currently are looking only into three protocols which are SNMP, HTTP and SSH. But I will explain a bit what I mean. But I'm trying to give you as more background as possible. So the first thing I did was last year in the winter, the final part of 2003, I uh, built a very simple prototype to show, to see if it was possible. And it was integrated, I mean, uh, the code was in the same repository of NotShot. And uh, uh, it was coupled with the NotShot code, and it, it was not reusable unless you use NotShot. And also, it's hard to contribute to such uh, a project because if you don't know Django and web application stuff, and no shot, you just won't do it, and that's bad. Um, and another problem that I, I developed quickly to just demonstrate it was possible, so it was bad code. So, I, uh, as soon as I found some more time, I did another iteration and I separated it in a separate repository, uh, which is only Python, there is no Django, there is no web application stuff and this has some advantages which are is a, what, there is a simpler code base which is easier to maintain and it's easier to contribute because people with no experience with Django but if they know a little bit of Python they can contribute and um, it's reusable because you don't have to use NotShot to use it. If you use anything else, any other node database or whatever uh, stuff you use to retrieve data, you can do it. You can use it. But it still had some weakness, uh, the second prototype, because it's, it was still a prototype, so it sucked. And um, I had no time because I was actively working on uh, the new version of NotShot. So, what uh, should I do? What? I, I thought this is not really hard because it's quite some work to find all the differences between these protocols and firmwares, but it's not rocket science. It's not as hard as what the routing protocols people are doing. This is, I, I believe, is much more simpler. Um, but it's a lot of work. So I thought that maybe um, a student could work on it and I set it up in a way that it should be possible. So I also wanted to validate this idea. 
this hypothesis. So there is this uh, Google Summer of Code that we participate often, and uh, thanks to Mario B, which I don't see here, I hope he would come, and, but he's not here, but I thank him anyway, and I, and I thank the FryFund community, because uh, we participated with them, and we got this slot, this JSOC slot, and we, I accepted this proposal from Alessandro Bucciarelli, which uh, is a student of the University of Tor Vergata in Rome, which is mentored by me. And um, so now we have this uh, officially accepted JSOC project, and let's see which are the goals for these JSOC projects. Uh, for the milestone one, which uh, coincides with the mid-term evaluation, which is around June, mid-June, we want to finish the SMP uh, backend for OpenWRT and IRS and the SSH backends for OpenWRT and IRS. I will show you a bit of code in a moment. Um, then, on the second milestone, uh, we'd like to explore the possibility to write uh, backends from for HTTP, it should be hard because we saw it's possible to retrieve information via HTTP from OpenWRT and ARS. Uh, we would also like to try some other stuff like HMAX, which is the operating system that runs on edge, edge routers from Ubiquiti. Uh, what have we done so far? Uh, not what he has he accomplished so far. Because uh, uh, the um, Google Summer of Code, um, now it was community bonding period. So we have a uh, meeting often with Alessandro. He has came practically every week to our regular meetings. And we um, uh, have been able to discuss a lot and chat a lot. And I gave him a lot of suggestions and indications on how to proceed. And he already produced. Uh, some code, uh, 37 comments up to date. Um, okay, so now you want to show, uh, you want to see something because uh, I'm not talking about Bubbleware. Let's see. Uh, how do I. Okay. I switched here. Uh, let me move it. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for this. So I'm now connected uh, through a, a VPN connection with Linux. Let's see. Uh, how can I do this? This is hard. <laughs> okay. So I can hardly see. I start with the SMP backend. No. No. What can I do? Suggest me. Oh, right. That was easy. You can change the color. Oh, it's better. Change the color to white. No. Okay. Okay, let's keep it simple. Okay, so. Um, I'll show you the uh, AeroS backend because. Uh, Mm, just uh, basically querying my device at home because it's a very controlled environment. So just to show you, uh, so this is not finished, so there might be some problems, but I don't think so. some parameters which um, in this case we just need the host because we set up the SNP community to be public uh, so it means you can do uh, many read operations without the need of a password basically so in this case I just insert the IP address or the host name Now, I want to know 
the, the name of this device and I do device.name. Then I would like to know also the model, which device model. Let's use the tab. Okay, this is a rocket M5. And we have some more methods here, as you can see. Uh, so the difficult thing uh, would be at a certain moment when we have these backends, we have to harmonize the API so that all the methods are similar. And we also have to build the data structure so that it makes sense. So, uh, for example, let's see something that is ugly, which needs to be improved. For example, this Ethernet standard stuff here, uh, this one, it's ugly because you could have more than one Ethernet interface. So this stuff needs to be improved, but we are on the way. And uh, so we will have to define a public API which will have to be stable. But just to show you, basically, we could get some more uh, Run the RAM of the device, and uh, and the total available. So this, uh, w what happens when I write this stuff? When I write device dot name internally, the library does the necessary SNMP uh, query to get the information. So I. The user of the library will have to know all the details about that and can focus on what is he doing in that uh, moment which he needs to develop some stuff that uh, queries the data. But is it just this? No, because you might not have this situation. You might have a different situation. And for example, let's try uh, to use a, a different protocol. Let's use SSH. For using SSH, it means you have to enter the password or you have to have the key on your machine. We, you, I use the same firmware but with a different protocol. And let's instantiate it again. This one I call D2 and AOS. So you see the parameters, the input are different and username and password do, do not have default values, meaning that are required. It's also written a little bit there. Uh, the default port is of course 22 because that's the default port of SSH. So let's see. The host name is the same because I'm, I'm, I will use the same device and I log in as root. I cannot turn my head anymore. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. <laughs> anyway, the password can be empty because I have the key in the um, machine. Um. And on the on the device there is my public key, so I don't need to enter any password, and I can leave it empty. Okay. So when I type device name, here there is a difference between SMP and SSH because SSH has to establish a connection. So if I am not connected already, this would be a little bit slower because it will have to connect. Now it's connecting, and then it retrieves the name then afterwards it would be faster, because it's connected now. Um, usually the idea is that you wouldn't have to take care of these operations like connecting and disconnecting, but if you want, you can do it. Here you see the method to disconnect. If I disconnect, now I'm disconnected basically. And if I do this again, or I could do connect. This is taken care uh, automatically, but now I'm doing manually to show you that 
the idea is that if you need to do it, you can do it. So even here, I do model, and you see I call the same um, methods, and I get this the same output. So the goal is to have, you see, for this stuff it's easy. I'm just calling the name and the model, so it's quite easy. For other methods, we are not uh, getting yet the same results, but for the moment we are just focused on uh, writing as more methods as, as we can, and then at the end we will harmonize them. Um, but the one of the most important things of this library is that I would like to have a JSON representation of all the information that you can get from the device. So in the phase of uh, data entry of that information in your database, from your application you will just have to call one method and so you don't mess much with the internals of the various backends. So I show you the, the method that returns the JSON. I can do, for example, two JSON, and I and uses the JSON Python standard module. So in the keyword arguments, you can pass uh, some parameters that are uh, um, that expects that the JSON module expects. In this case, I want to find that four spaces and sort keys just to so you so that you can read it and I do print and you will get the JSON with all the stuff that uh, it was possible to retrieve. Some stuff will be empty either because you can't retrieve it with that protocol or either because it's not implemented yet at the moment, but there's no uh, release yet, so the goal is to have at least those uh, four backends I told you before, uh, for OpenWRT and IRS. Let's just try another device with OpenWRT. Uh, Klaus, tell me your, your IP address. Is it a tip link? No. Yeah. Yes, it is? Yeah, it is. Okay, very good. Uh, <laughs> Alessandro did a good job. Uh, so th this was easy. Alessandro just took the, the entire published uh, list of MAC addresses and prefixes and, and um, which company owns the prefix and he just does this check. So you, as you can see, it's pretty, it's not rocket science, it's just a lot of work. But hopefully uh, we'll we'll make it. So I hope that it will be also useful 
for other people. For, oops, I start from scratch. That was not good. Let's go on, I'm almost done. And uh, let's see. So what I want to do afterwards, first thing, uh, release this um, first version with some more documentation. At the moment, if you go to the GitHub project, you will find some basic documentation, but it doesn't cover everything. Also because we don't already know everything, so we are still learn we are in the learning phase and iterating to improve it. And uh, I want to use this library both on OpenWSP and NodeShot. Uh, this is what I do now as my daily job. They pay me to work on this stuff, mostly OpenWSP, but I'm trying to move some features to NodeShot and. Um, so if I manage to do that and my co-workers and boss thinks it's a good thing and they already told me that they like the idea, uh, it, would, it, would, it should be possible to get more funding uh, to, to work on it. Uh, I believe projects have to be sustainable, I don't want to do stuff that just de dies there. So if it's useful and other people use it and we find it useful, it will live, otherwise it will die. And um, unfortunately, Alessandro couldn't come because uh, he met us mm, since just uh, one month or so. So he was not prepared to do this already, but hopefully next year. And um, I left in Italian more information. Uh, for the GitHub project, that's the link. And if you have any question, here I am. That's all.